Um, guys, you guys hear what happened in D.C. the last week? About this? Yeah. Yeah. We sent everybody down with a message to cut spending. Grab some change in your pocket, because that's about what they cut. Yeah. Every single freshman congressman from Ohio voted against making the cuts. They buckled. They got in bed with John Boehner and the establishment Republicans. Jim Renacci, who is some of your guys' congressmen, I called Mr. Renacci's office last week to let him ask him basically if he was planning on being a one-term congressman because the votes that he's casting are not with the message we sent. Mr. Renacci's smug assistant, pretty much like him, asked, well, would you rather have John Bocheri be your congressman? I think I put that in the email to you guys. This is the attitude that these guys are getting down there, guys. This last vote with this stopgap, it was more than just about the spending. This was about some of these freshmen, who we knew all of them weren't going to be good. But this was about some of these freshmen now getting comfortable with the establishment GOP. You're going to hear some people tell you, oh, don't speak ill of the Republican Party. Why? If they're not doing their job, they're no better than anybody else. This is why you won't see us go out supporting politicians. Politicians will let you down by nature. That's what they are. Our values, fiscal responsibility, constitutionally limited government, and support of the free market. Guys, no matter what happens, if we keep our message on that, it's not going to let us down. We exist for us, we the people. The Tea Party movement does not exist for politicians. They're there for us. We are not there for them. We are not there to do their job for them. They are down there to do a job, not to give us excuses of why they can't do their job. Any one of us can go down and tell them why we can't do it. And this is why it's very important that you guys came out in the rain. It's just starting to slowly, starting to slowly clear up. But you guys are down here to show your dedication because these guys are getting out of control. Right? There's Democrats, there's Republicans, there's party hacks, and then you have your establishment politicians. These are the guys that Harry Reid and John Boehner, these are the guys that will come together to work against the Tea Party movement because we are a threat to their collective power. And this is what these guys are good at, staying in power. We are the power. So with that, what I want to do is to lighten the, the mood up a little bit. We have Eric Gollum. He's got a couple of laws against him, some Palestinian groups, if I'm correct. Eric is a conservative blogger, author, commentator, satirist. He's written several books. He's got his books up over here for sale. Eric uh, has been all across the United States at uh, the Eagle Forum state conventions, many Tea Party conventions, and um, what we want to do is we want to give you a little taste of Eric now. I live in Los Angeles with a bunch of leftist basket cases, so <laughs> let me tell you what I tell all great conservatives. It is such an honor and a privilege to be among so many of my fellow gun-toting, Bible-thumping, freedom-loving fascists. You are the loveliest bunch of astroturf I have ever seen in my life. You don't look like a violent, angry mob. You look like a nice person. I, I bet you've never even been a Wisconsin protester. I'm here because our freedoms are under assault, and it starts at the top, and my message to Barack Obama is very simple. None of us care if the president is light-skinned or dark-skinned. The problem we have with Barack Obama is that he and his supporters are thin-skinned. <laughs> They treat any criticism like an act of war, the only time they understand war, and then they tell us to go along and be bipartisan. Now, when a liberal tells a conservative, be bipartisan, what that liberal is really telling the conservative is, shut up and agree with me. Well, if the left wants bipartisanship, I've got a couple ways we can be bipartisan, and we'll all get along just fine. First, let's compromise on gun control. And I know some of you are like, 
what did that hip you with the long hair from the People's Republic of Los Angeles just say? Yeah, let's compromise on gun control. Here's how it works. Liberals favor gun control, conservatives are against it. Well, let's be bipartisan. Let's simply take away all the guns from the liberals and give to us. <laughs> That way, if there's ever a conflict like election 2000 that we can't resolve peaceably, we will win because we will have all the guns. Next, let's compromise on taxes. The left favors higher taxes, the right favors lower taxes. Well, if the left likes socialism and wealth redistribution so much, fine by me. Let's simply take the money from them and give it to us. Now, if they try to stop us, remember my first bullet point, we'll have all the guns. Now, People say you can't even make fun of Barack Obama. They say he's like actor Will Smith. He's just so cool, calm, collected, doesn't get rattled. Well, for those who say we can't make fun of Barack Obama, this is still America. So I say, yes we can, yes we can, yes we can. Yes we can, yes we should, yes we absolutely will. And the message you delivered in November to the president was, Mr. Obama, no you can't, no you won't, and no you don't. No. There's tons to make fun of Barack Obama. First of all, he's nothing like actor Will Smith. I saw the movies Independence Day and Men in Black. Will Smith secured the borders and took care of the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start out with the obvious. Barack Obama's head is so disproportionate, they should rename the presidential plate Air Force One. And you would think with ears that size just once he would listen, but he doesn't. Now, I don't want to say Barack Obama is a snob, but I look at him and I think, picture all what happened if Jacques Chirac and John Kerry had a baby. Actually, I'll apologize for that. There's nothing wrong with being half black, but to say somebody's half French is unforgivable. So, but I don't want the second coming of Jacques Chirac and John Kerry. I'd rather the second coming of Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher than I mean Sarah Palin. Now, with her in mind, I wrote the book, Ideological Bigotry. Got books and t-shirts. I recommend the books because they're more expensive. Now, I found out why the left hates the right, and they do hate our guts. It is because we exist and we breathe air. That's it. Now, take the word Jewish, and by the way, I should have known better driving all the way from Cincy to get here. Take the word Jewish, replace it with the word conservative, and I, as a Jewish person, Never ever rely on a Palestinian GPS tracker. <laughs> I took one wrong turn, ended up in a cemetery, and a very sinister voice said, You have reached your final destination. <laughs> I got so angry, I threw the thing out the window, which was good, because five seconds later it exploded. But anyway, take the word Jewish, replace it with the word conservative, take the words Hamas and Hezbollah, replace it with liberal Democrat. The left are verbal suicide bombers, except less warm and fuzzy. And if you're a minority in conservatives, such as a Michael Steele, a Sarah Palin, and Eric Cantor, they will try to destroy you, and they will try to rip you to shreds if you believe in radical Christian notions such as love thy neighbor. You know, late at night, I'm worried about Osama bin Laden wielding a bomb, not terribly threatened by Pat Robertson wielding a book. Now, why do they hate Sarah Palin? Not for anything she says or does, for the reason they hate all conservatives, because she is. Now, I don't agree with Sarah Palin on every issue, and maybe I shouldn't say this in front of a conservative group, but I'm going to, being from California. I can't stand her position on traditional marriage. I think it's awful. Um, what I mean by that is I can't stand the fact that she's married to somebody who's not me. <laughs> I'm going to be speaking a couple, in a couple days in front of uh, Lieutenant Governor Taylor. I asked for advice before I speak. They said, you want advice? Her husband will be standing right there. Please put the jewelry and flowers away. So, but what do you say about these ladies such as Sarah Palin? What do you say about Superwoman? I mean, ran an entire state, budget surplus, five lovely children that she picks up and takes to school. Barack Obama only has two children. He has Joe Biden picking them up from school. <laughs> If he did any less real work, he would be a Wisconsin school teacher and the protesters supporting him. <laughs> you know, and I know some people say, but, you know, the left should love Sarah Palin. She has a beautiful, adorable, special needs child that she cares for. For that reason alone, the left should worship Sarah Palin because the left is an entire political ideology of special needs children. <laughs> Every word out of their mouth, Gibby, Gibby, I need, I want, I deserve, I'm entitled. No, you don't. 
when you're three years old, wildly adorable. When you're 63, like Barbara Boxer, Hillary Clinton, or the Pelosa Raptor, it is intolerable. Now, so I became a conservative. I became a conservative because I am the son of a Holocaust survivor. When you are the son of a Holocaust survivor, you will not get an ounce of sympathy growing up for anything as long as you live. There was no teenage angst in my home. I remember at age 14, trying to convince Dad's social studies class was too hard. He just looked at me unsympathetically and asked, Did the teacher try to shoot you? <laughs> I said, No, Dad. He said, Upstairs, books, learn, personal responsibility, no victocrats in this household. Now, my parents are complaining in South Florida. My dad's like, We've got to secure the border. It's out of control. I said, Dad, what have the Cubans ever done to you? They're conservatives. What's the problem? What do you have against Marco Rubio? He said, son, I'm talking about the Northern Florida board and the New York liberals keep coming. <laughs> he wants us to get our best sharpshooters at the Citadel in South Carolina to keep from reaching Georgia. Florida, Arizona, California, Texas, overrun by parasites. They train the state of services. They don't work demand new services, speak a foreign language I don't understand. I don't recognize my own country anymore, all because of these people who take and take and give nothing back. Of course, I'm talking about AARP liberals. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say a couple words about our military. For those of you veterans who are related to veterans, thank you and welcome home. Now, not to brag, because real heroes should not spend every waking minute announcing to the world that they're heroes, but I know something about war zones and combat. I did two tours of duty as a student in a New York public school. <laughs> You're welcome. So I can tell you when a war is lost, we should pull all the troops out so nobody dies in vain? Well, Harry Reid was right. Let's right now surrender, admit defeat, and pull every single one of our troops out of Detroit and relocate them to Iraq and Afghanistan with his actually hope of winning. They say we can't secure Fallujah and Ambar province. They can't secure Chicago and Philadelphia. And they complain and demonize our soldiers about Abu Ghraib. My friends and I went through something similar to Abu Ghraib growing up. It was called summer camp. Okay. They'll say, yeah, but at the Abu Ghraib, they put bras and panties on the prisoners' heads. I asked the liberals a simple question. Have you ever been on a college campus? <laughs> It's called Rush Week. And Rush Week has nothing to do with Mr. Limbaugh because if it did, they would actually be learning things at this Poison Ivy League University. Now, it is always better to have, and politicians should learn this, it is always better to have people ask, why are you finished speaking, than when are you finished speaking? So I will leave you with a Hebrew word. That word is he nani. It means here I am. Never give up, never give in, always fight for what you believe in, never back down from a fight, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, bring a bazooka. <laughs> we are right, they are wrong, we will win, they will lose, we will laugh, we will make them cry in 2011, 2012, 2013 and beyond and have fun doing it. Live, love, laugh, win, and if you want to win some easy money next week, Kentucky Derby, John Kerry's the favorite, he's going to win by a face. He may be, here I am, conservative and proud of it always. Thank you so very much. <laughs>